Jets team invented a device also related to a sense of sight. I guess you can say this year's competition is filled with visionaries? No? OK. All right. Admittedly, not my best work. But let's hear from a team that's put a little more thought into theirs. Hi. We're a team Oculus Staple. Oculus Staple is this revolutionary new device that fixes the drooping of the upper eyelid. It's caused by muscle elongation or weakness as you age. Currently, if a person is suffering from the drooping of the upper eyelid, a specialized surgeon will go into an operating room and lift the upper lid. And the procedure takes anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes, and it's a very complicated surgery. Not only is Oculus Staple very impactful for the drooping of the upper eyelid surgeries, part of the technology that we've developed could impact other surgeries as well, something that needs to simultaneously cut and seal tissue. We at Oculus Staple have created a way to make fixing of the drooping upper eyelids faster, easier, and safer compared to the current methods. We're very excited about the future for Oculus Staple. We've received positive feedback from the medical community, the oculoplastic surgeons that would be potentially using the device. Please welcome to the stage Team Oculus Staple. My name is Mohamed Najia, and I'm accompanied by Jackie Berinsky and Drew Padilla, and we're here today to open your eyes about drooping eyelids. As we age, our eyelid muscles elongate, causing drooping. Common tasks like driving and walking become much harder and unsafe with the severely limited field of view and blurred vision caused by drooping eyelids. In the graphic behind me, the person driving with drooping eyelids can't even see the rear view mirror nor the traffic signal. Quite literally, they can't see in front of them or behind them. My grandfather, like five million other Americans, have drooping eyelids, but he was reluctant to get the surgery because 25% of current drooping eyelid surgeries need to be redone, which is one of the highest surgical revision rates in the United States. We observed current surgeries, and what we saw was shocking. The surgeon first seals the inner eyelid with sutures. They then have to freehand cut away the excess muscle that causes the drooping, and a significant portion of the time, they accidentally cut those sutures. To fix that problem, they need to cut away more muscle than intended, leaving the patient with an abnormally short eyelid. We designed a safer solution, so it's my pleasure to introduce Oculus Staple. The surgeon would first insert a disposable staple cartridge into the base of the Oculus Staple clamp. Because it's disposable, we can sell these cartridges for each surgery a doctor performs. The surgeon would then clamp the excess eyelid muscle and insert a standard scalpel into the base of the clamp. By simply sliding the scalpel across the base of the clamp, they're able to simultaneously cut away the muscle and seal the incision simultaneously. The resulting tissue, especially facing the cornea, is smooth, secure, and uniform. For the surgeon, Oculus Staple is an easy sell because we completely eliminate the risk of accidentally cutting their sutures and surgeons around the country are excited about Oculus Staple. I'm excited with FDA approval that I could use a device on my annual medical trips to help train mid-level providers to do this surgery and give better access to patients in these regions. Once our device is FDA approved, I'll be thrilled to be the first to adopt it in practice. It's a great innovation, and I hope that uh, I'll be able to uh, evaluate and test the final, uh, final product. We've acquired five letters of intent from surgeons who want to use Oculus Staple upon FDA approval. With the support of the Inventure Prize, we'd be able to start animal model studies in preparation for the FDA 510K regulatory pathway. We're committed in getting Oculus Staple to market because we can transform the surgery into a simple five-minute office-based procedure that can open the opportunity for patients to get their vision restored. We think there's one eye-opening product that you're going to see today, and we think it's Oculus Staple. Thank you. All right. Um, I just want to... Uh, I just want to add my letter of intent when it's time for my first facelift. I'm coming to you. <laughs> Judges. So, so I'm, I'm now scared. I'm about five, five years away from getting my AARP card. Am I, like, am I ge genetically predisposed to kind of drooping eyelids? Or like, how, how, do, how do I know? Like, what, what are the candidate kind of uh, profiles? Well, it, it, 
uh, it, it naturally occurs with age, and 80% of patients that currently get this procedure done are elderly, over the age of 70. And the, <laughs> and the, the real opportunity is that by, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, by 2050, there's going to be a 120% increase in that population. So we do expect that uh, drooping eyelids to scale with, with that population as well. John? So um, help me understand the economics of this. You're, um, you're saying it's uh, going to be $50, $15 for the cartridge? Is that uh, is it $50 procedure? Or what, what's kind of your, your view of the economics here? Right. So we were able to uh, do market research with purchasing managers at Massachusetts General Hospital and Emory University Hospital. And in speaking with them, um, they would be upwards of paying uh, $50 for the individual cartridges themselves. You're saving and a surgeon potentially 30 minutes of time, multiple revisits, and right. yet you're only charging 50 bucks. I mean, why wouldn't you be charging, if you have patents behind this, you know, pharmaceutical companies charge $1,000 for a pill they can make for, you know, $10. Why wouldn't you be charging a real premium? Because as a patient, it's safer. The doctor has less malpractice risk. It's less of their time. I would charge a fortune for this. And, uh, <laughs> right. So this, this is just an initial estimate that we've received from those two hospitals. Yeah. And we are saving uh, the hospital or the surgeon um, oh. a, 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 a great deal of money. The difference between patient and outpatient it's, surgery, I mean, that's, a, that's an order of magnitude of Yeah, we, we could potentially or, save upwards of $4,000. Yeah, it's show surgery. business, not show friends. Charge more money. <laughs> 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 I don't want to offend any doctors in the house, but I think they like operating, you know, so like you're kind of um, reducing their business size to a certain extent. So the, the current surgeons that perform the surgery are specialized oculoplastic surgeons. And potentially with our device, we open up the opportunity for general ophthalmologists to also perform the surgery as well um, in an in a outpatient or a, a doctor office. Facility. And to your point about it being something that surgeons do, we don't want to take business away from them. The whole point is that they can make it faster. This is actually the most common procedure that they do. Are there, are there other surgeries that are adjacent to this where you're already thinking about the next kind of how you expand it or just staying focused on this? How are you guys thinking about that? Uh, our focus has been on this condition um, initially because it's a, it's a relatively simple condition to, to uh, uh, fix but it can have drastic positive imp impacts on day-to-day on -day living. But there are other potential applications where surgeons may need to resect fine tissue and seal it subsequently. Um, skin biopsies may be uh, one potential avenue, mm -hmm. gastrointestinal, laparoscopic, or other ENT-type procedures. Why do you want to go through this whole painful process versus calling up Medtronic or Stryker and, uh, and just, right. you know, hello, I'll take the check? So we, were, we actually were invited to present at the Southeast Medical Device Association conference just yesterday. And in speaking there, we uh, began an initial dialogue with uh, medical device manufacturers about uh, potentially trying to license this product. Good. Congratulations, so, awesome. Team Oculus Staple. Now that the judges... <laughs> now that the judges are finished with their questions, Let's see whom Bahar has found in our audience to tell us a little bit more about Team Oculo Staple. I'm here with Pranay and Alex, who are team f uh, friends of Team Oculus Staple. So I could barely stomach stomach that presentation. Um, I guess you guys are used to this. A little bit, but there are a lot of people like you too. At a recent luncheon, Mohammed opened up with those videos and images of eye surgery. He couldn't see it, but I was sitting behind everybody, and pretty much everyone took a bite, grimaced, and looked away. Yeah, I uh, could not eat after that. So uh, tell me, how, how does the team come up with this idea? And um, are they good at kind of doing the surgery themselves? Well, you would think that they would be okay with blood and surgery and that sort of thing. But I know Muhammad has a fear of fainting at the sight of blood, so. Oh, he faints? <laughs> yes. Oh, my. Well, uh, good for him for at least sacrificing it, right, to make this invention? Fantastic. So if you think that this team should win, then make sure to text the keyword OcuStaple to 22333. Faith, visionaries in the house, back to you. Woo!